Joining me now is Jonathan Browning, the CEO of Volkswagen of America, and great seeing you again. Good to see you again. I think the last time I talked with you was at the Paris Auto That's Show, right. so here we're in yeah. Washington. Yeah, Washington with the snow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah boy, they, the city got nailed by a big snowstorm last you, night. You could have done with some active traffic man management last <laughs> night. Right. Well, this is going to be a big year for Volkswagen in America. You've got uh, the new Passat coming out at a brand new plant. Talk a little bit about what your hopes are for this year. I, I, I think 2011 is one of the most important years for Volkswagen in America in its recent history. And as you say, we've got this tremendous new plant coming on stream in Chattanooga and really is impressive to see what the team there have produced over a pretty short period of time, bring up a facility, bring people into the organization, bring the suppliers on board, as well as bring this wonderful new vehicle through the system. So Chattanooga is a big piece of it, but you know, there's also uh, the fact that we're in the early stages still of the Jetta launch uh, that is going very well. Obviously then the new Passat out of Chattanooga follows later in the year, but there's the minor detail of uh, a new Beetle to uh, also bring to market during the course of the year. So there's a lot going on with the brand and it's really, really good to see the momentum that, that's already been built. Very gutsy move by Volkswagen to declare very ambitious sales goals, more than doubling what you're doing right now. Uh, does that keep you awake at night knowing that you've got some very, very ambitious targets to hit? Well, you know, a, a lot of people just talk about the, the, the sales objectives and when we've set out some ambitious sales goals, but they're part of a 10 year plan and, and they're something we're working to. But as, a, as an organization, we really said there were four things we wanted to achieve. We wanted to make sure we were at the top of the pile in terms of quality and customer satisfaction, make sure our financial returns were where, where they needed to be, achieve as a group, 10 million vehicle sales on a global basis, as well as being a, a top employer. So we're, we're really working on a number of dimensions of the business to get to a, a leading position in the industry by 2018. And so it's all part of that, that overall plan. It's not just a single sales number. Volkswagen has gotten some criticism in the media uh, amongst purists who are saying, oh, the, the new Jetta is not like the, the old Jetta was, and the new Passat is too much of an American-type car. Problems that Volkswagen ran into 20, 30 years ago when it had a plant here. How do you answer the critics on that? Well, you know, uh, I think you have to, to let the facts speak for themselves. And there were some of the comments are around the time of the Jetta launch where people perhaps were, were feeling we were going outside of the comfort zone of, of the, the Volkswagen brand. But you look at what's happening with Jetta. I mean, Jetta quarter, fourth quarter sales were up 40%. Over 60% of the trade-ins for the new Jetta are from competitive make. So the customers are really responding to this opportunity of affordable German engineering uh, you know, out there in the US marketplace. So, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make German engineering available for all, make it much more accessible. And, and that's at the heart of what the Passat is. We're bringing a, an affordable German engineered mid-size sedan into the US marketplace. And it's very interesting in Detroit uh, around the, the, the reveal and the discussion, not one challenge in terms of let's say, the, the decontenting story that sometimes we heard on Jetta that I think is actually now behind us because people understand what we're doing is balancing the portfolio. Yes, there's some vehicles that are available for those who prioritize their, their everyday driving needs. On the other hand, we've got the high performance, the driving enthusiast vehicles, whether it be the Jetta GLI, whether it be the Golf R that we just announced at the la end of last year that will be coming back into to the US marketplace. So we've got a balance. We, we've got a vehicle that you know, really does address the enthusiast as well as those uh, with their everyday driving needs. We've got some questions from the chat room from the okay. people who are watching right now. Mud Monster wants to know, has there been talk at Volkswagen about introducing the transporter van in the U.S. to compete with the Ford Transit or Nissan's NV series? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a really interesting question in terms of the, the additional opportunities across our portfolio. When, when you look at it, we've actually got quite a large number of different vehicles already for the volume that we uh, we sell in the US and so part of our priority is to make sure we we deepen our presence with the existing vehicles I think everybody's got uh, good ideas about what other vehicles we could bring into the market and, and I'd love to bring into the market over time but we, we've got to make sure that we don't spread ourselves too thinly and so uh, ideas like uh, some of the uh, uh, the, the, the more uh, space fuel efficient, sporty, other derivatives that extend the lineup are part of our discussion, but we've got to take this a step at the time. 
Uh, we had uh, Jim O'Donnell from BMW on here earlier, and this is one of the questions is uh, referring to that, because O'Donnell said that he thought within 10 years, up to 50% of all BMWs sold in the U.S. could be diesel. So Michael Coates wants to know, like BMW, can VW reach 50% diesel? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, you know, the thing that I'm encouraged about is you know, we saw 20% of our sales, over 20% of our sales last year already with clean diesel technology, the TDI. In the month of December, we saw over 50% of Golfs and 30% of Touregs already with diesel. So the momentum is in that direction. Whether, whether we get to 50% diesel, interesting question. I mean, there are so many now alternative powertrains that will be part of uh, the customer's choice list and increasingly in the future. You'll go from you know, gasoline and diesel and hybrid, electric vehicles. So there is a, a growing choice. So I think, yeah, 50% in terms of non-gasoline uh, powered vehicles, but whether it's 50% diesel yeah we so we if if it happens we're very well positioned okay and when might uh, Volkswagen have a hybrid and or electric in the US market well you know we, we kicked off with the, our premium hybrid the Touareg at the end of last year so we launched the new Touareg with oh. both gas and hybrid and uh, TDI so we've actually got three uh, alternative fuel uh, systems with the, with the new Touareg and so that was our first entry and uh, is really doing well it, it, it it's got the the performance of a V8 with the, the fuel economy of a V6 so it's a, it's a great combination on the Touareg. Our next entry will be the, the Jetta Hybrid, and that'll be coming to the market, and then on beyond that we'll be bringing a, an electro, uh, electric Golf into the, in the market. So and When will we see the, the Hybrid Jetta? Uh, the hybrid Jetta will be a, a 13 model year, uh, so that that's still a. I'm, I'm sorry, that'll be a, a 12 model year. Mm -hmm. So it'll it'll be uh, a little way out, but it, it's it's coming pretty soon. And then the uh, the electric vehicle will be uh, back end of 13 calendar year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see, a comment from Grant. He says, do you see VW's goal of being number one getting in the way of success the same way it did at GM? Uh, and that's why it's really important to understand what we mean by leadership. And we don't talk about number one, we talk about leadership in the industry. And we've defined leadership on these four criteria of quality of customer satisfaction, of financial performance, of volume, and you know, as an employer. So leadership for us means you know, all of those things. Now within that, we've said 10 million vehicles globally, which would give us a sales leadership, but that, that's not the focus. It, it's what it means to be the leading company. And mm -hmm. sometimes that, that doesn't always come through in the- mm -hmm. uh, in I'm the glad commentary. you clarified that, because it does not come yeah. through. Um, your new plant in Tennessee, uh, coincides with the UAW saying it wants to organize all the transplants. I'm wondering if Volkswagen might be the first target of their organizing effort. What's your reaction to the union coming after transplants, including your plant? Well, uh, obviously we, we all see and hear the comments from the, the UAW. I think you need to ask the UAW in terms of uh, what their plans are. But I think from our point of view, it, it's very clear. Um, it will be a decision for our employees whether to uh, bring the, the UAW into the plant or not. Around the world, we operate with both unionized and non-unionized plants, and, and we can operate in, uh, in both environments. So the, the most important thing for us is that we have a plant, a product, a supply base, an employee base that work together very effectively in Chattanooga, all the early signs are tremendous uh, in that respect and it's a, a plant and operation that is globally competitive. This is a plant that is really at the leading edge of uh, global manufacturing in a number of respects. I mean, if you look at the, the environmental performance in the plant, uh, we, I was just talking earlier this morning, uh, we, we're reducing uh, CO2 emissions by some of the technologies we put in the plant by 20%. We're uh, recycling wastewater in the plant so we reduce usage of, of fresh water by 360,000 gallons a year. We're saving enough energy that we're actually saving the equivalent of, of 2,000 households per year. So there's a lot of really cutting edge technology and process going on in that plant. And those are the things that will, will help us really be globally competitive. And that's a great point to wrap this up. Jonathan Browning, thanks so much for stopping by and talking of what's going on with Volkswagen of America. My pleasure and uh, choose the city where we talk next. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thanks. Thanks.
Auto Line Live from the Washington, D.C. Auto Show is brought to you by our Inner Circle sponsor, Bosch, invented for life, and also by Dow Automotive Systems, innovations for clean powertrain solutions, and by the Steel Market Development Institute, automotive steel technologies powered by strength, fueled by innovation.